Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to our worship service this morning. Um, we begin our service today by singing our first hymn, Today Your Mercy Calls Us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Amen. Holy and gracious God, I confess, I confess that I am a sinner, and am guilty before you, O Lord, of all my sins. I confess that I have lived as if I mattered most. I have not hallowed your name as I should. My worship and prayers have faltered. I have not let your love have its way with me, and so my love for others has failed. I am mindful of those whom I have hurt by my words and actions, and those whom I have failed to help. My thoughts and desires also reflect my sin. I am truly sorry for all of this, and ask for grace to forgive my sins, and the aid of the Holy Spirit to amend my sinful life. By the mercy of God, we are redeemed by Jesus Christ, and in him we are forgiven. As a called and ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all of your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. All those who practice it have a good understanding. His praise endures forever. Praise the Lord. I will give thanks to the Lord with my whole heart. Great are the works of the Lord, studied by all who delight in them. 
Full of splendor and majesty is his work, and his righteousness endures forever. He has caused his wondrous works to be remembered. The Lord is gracious and merciful. He provides food for those who fear him. He remembers his covenant forever. He sent redemption to his people. He has commanded his covenant forever. Holy and awesome is his name. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. All who practice it have good understanding. His praise endures forever. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting Father, you give your children many blessings beyond anything we deserve. In every trial and temptation, grant us a sure confidence in your loving kindness and mercy. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. The Old Testament reading is from Isaiah chapter 56, verses 1 and 6 through 8. This is what the Lord says. Maintain justice and do what is right, for my salvation is close at hand and my righteousness will soon be revealed. And foreigners who bind themselves to the Lord to serve him, to love the name of the Lord, and to worship him, all who keep the Sabbath without desecrating it, and who hold fast to my covenant, these I will bring to my holy mountain and give them joy in my house of prayer. Their burnt offerings and sacrifices will be accepted on my altar, for my house will be called the house of prayer for all nations. The sovereign Lord declares, he who gathers the exiles of Israel, I will gather still others to them besides those already gathered. This is the word of the Lord. The epistle reading is from Romans chapter 11, verses 1 and 2, 13 through 15, 28 through 32. I ask then, did God reject his people? By no means. I am an Israelite myself, a descendant of Abraham from the tribe of Benjamin. God did not reject his people whom he foreknew. I am talking to you, Gentiles. Inasmuch as I am the apostles to the Gentiles, I make much of my ministry in the hope that I may somehow arouse my own people to envy and save some of them. For if their rejection is in the reconciliation of the world, what will the acceptance be but life from the dead? As far as, far as the gospel is concerned, they are enemies on your account. But as far as election is concerned, they are loved on account of the patriarchs, for God's gift and his call are irrevocable. Just as you who were at one time disobedient to God have now received mercy as a result of their disobedience, so they too have now become disobedient in order that they too may now receive mercy as a result of God's mercy to you. For God has bound all men over to disobedience so that he may have mercy on them all. This is the word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 15th chapter. Glory Glory to you, O Lord. 
Leaving that place, Jesus withdrew to the region of Tyre and Sidon. A Canaanite woman from that vicinity came to him crying out, Lord, son of David, have mercy on me. My daughter is suffering terribly from demon possession. Jesus did not answer a word. So his disciples came to him and urged him, Send her away, for she keeps crying out after us. He answered, I was sent only to the lost sheep of Israel. The woman came and knelt before him, Lord, help me, she said. He replied, It is not right to take the children's bread and toss it to their dogs. Yes, Lord, she said, but even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. Then Jesus said to her, Woman, you have great faith. Your request is granted, and her daughter was healed from that very hour. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. We join now in the confession of our Christian faith as we speak together the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated as we join in singing our next hymn. Grace, mercy, and peace be unto you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, the disciples needed a break now more than ever. Two weeks ago we noted that the disciples had just learned that Herod had John the Baptist killed, and that was a great source of grief for Jesus and for his disciples. They'd also been working very hard, Jesus took them to the wilderness on the other side of the sea for a little R&R. However, the crowds figured where they were going, and so they were there waiting for them when they got there. Jesus then spent all day ministering to the crowds and healing their sick. And then, of course, he fed them in the event that we know as the feeding of the 5,000. 
Then last week we learned right, right after he fed the 5,000, Jesus put the disciples back in the boat and told them to go back to the other side of the Sea of Galilee again while he dismissed the crowds. The disciples ended up spending the entire night crossing the sea because of that brutal headwind. It was almost dawn when Jesus came walking out to them on the water and they finally made it to the other side. Now the verses that tell us uh, that, that right after that tell us that some early risers recognized Jesus and woke up the whole neighborhood and the crowds all gathered bringing all their sick to him. And, and of course, um, the Pharisees and the scribes had to come really fast from Jerusalem and, and Jesus had to debate with them. Uh, basically, it had been almost two days without sleep and a full night of hard labor right after that since Jesus first decided that the disciples needed that break. If they needed a break then, they really needed it now. Now the portion of the gospel that we heard today informs us that Jesus finally took the disciples completely out of the Jewish territory. Jesus went away from there and withdrew to the district of Tyre and Sidon. It said in our gospel reading, Tyre and Sidon, cities along the Mediterranean coast in the territory of Phoenicia. This means that Jesus had taken his disciples about his journey into Gentile territory, north of Galilee. Now maybe they're in Gentile territory, completely outside the borders of Galilee. They could finally get some rest and deal with the death of John the Baptist. Well, not so much. Have mercy on me, O Lord, son of David. My daughter is severely oppressed by a demon. A Canaanite woman from the region came out crying and praying to Jesus. Now you can imagine um, if you were one of those disciples along with Jesus and here comes this woman after they finally think they've gotten away from everybody where they can finally get some rest. I, I don't know about you, but I know I would be thinking, oh no, here we go again, right? Well, at first it seems as if Jesus was also thinking that way. The gospel said he did not answer a word. It almost seems as if Jesus is hoping that maybe if he ignores her, she'll go away. Now notice the text did not say, that she cried. It says that she was crying. This means that she continually repeated that prayer. Have mercy on me, O Lord, son of David. My daughter is, is severely oppressed by a demon. Over and over again, she repeated that prayer. She was getting on the disciples' nerves as you might imagine, his disciples came finally and begged him, saying, send her away, for she's crying out after us. It's kind of like the disciples were saying, look, Jesus, we've seen this kind of stuff before. She's not going to give us any peace until you give her what she wants or answer her question one way or the other. Just drive out that demon and she'll go away, and we can finally get some peace. Jesus knew something about this woman that neither the disciples and not even the woman herself knew. He knew that somewhere along the line, someone had told this woman who Jesus was. The Holy Spirit used this information to create faith in the woman. She referred to Jesus as the son of David. Now, if you refer to Jesus as the son of David, then that Jesus is the Messiah. So she had that figured out. Jesus saw great and beautiful faith in this woman. He wanted this woman and the disciples and you and I also to know just how strong that faith was that she has. Now, since only God can look at the heart, Jesus sets up a few tests 
to demonstrate just how strong the woman's faith really is. Now, he answered to the disciples, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Now, we know Jesus was speaking just to the disciples. And you can imagine, well, he's with the apostles, the twelve, so there's twelve of them there. And he's talking to a group of twelve, and he, he's probably not talking softly, and the woman is right there next to them. After all, she had been crying and praying to Jesus for help. Um, so just take a minute and put yourself in that woman's shoes. What Jesus said, and what she probably heard was, I was sent to the Jews. You are a Gentile. Too bad for you. Now, be honest. Wouldn't you be angry? Would you be crushed? How would you answer him? Well, she came and knelt down before him, saying, Lord, help me. This woman ran out in front of Jesus and knelt down so that he almost tripped over her. And then she kept right on praying, Lord, help me. Help me. The faith that the Holy Spirit had given this woman would not be denied. But Jesus knew there was even more to this woman's faith. This time he spoke directly to her. And he answered, It is not right to take the children's bread and throw it to the dogs. Now, I don't know about you, but Right now, that calling a woman a dog was definitely not a compliment even back then. As bad as it is today, it may have been worse even that time. She said, how would you answer, by the way? <laughs> if you're honest, I can imagine, right? She said, yes, Lord, even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. Now this woman took Jesus at his word. You can uh, think of what, she, what she's really saying by those words. She's, he, she's saying, Lord, if you say I am a dog, then I must be a dog. And I don't care. Because you know that even the dog get to eat the crumbs that fall from the master's table. If you give me a crumb... I know that will be enough. She knew that even a crumb from Jesus would be enough to drive out that demon. She had a strong faith. Now, I'm pretty sure that they didn't have fist pumps, you know, back in first century Israel. You, you can imagine if, if Jesus were here today and, and after he'd been debating with the Pharisees and the scribes and teaching his disciples and they're having trouble understanding him and he comes up to this woman with this faith um, and she says those things that she says and she agrees with him. You can imagine Jesus going, yes, finally, someone, right? It's interesting that a few verses before our gospel reading. Jesus was debating the Pharisees and scribes, like we said, and some of the, the best educated people in the area that are the scribes and the Pharisees. They're certainly the most well-versed in, in the Bible. Um, they were Bible scholars. Uh, Jesus, in the debate, tore them apart. Now, here's this Gentile woman, probably uneducated certainly probably you would think at least she didn't know anything about the Bible and she won her debate with Jesus the Holy Spirit had given this woman faith to move mountains Jesus put some serious hurdles up in front of her and yet that woman's faith made her like Superman able to jump tall buildings with a single bound. Now, this woman could praise God for the wonderful faith he had given her. And certainly, I'm sure she did, because she now knew it for sure. 
The disciples also knew it, and the Holy Spirit inspired Matthew to record this account so that we too could know it. But why was it so important that they know and we know about this woman's faith? Remember, Matthew's gospel was originally written for Jewish converts to the faith. There was a great controversy in the early church. Many people thought that you had to convert to Judaism before you could become a Christian. The gospel, according to Matthew, regularly puts that idea to rest. Matthew regularly records um, accounts of Gentiles coming to faith without being converted to Judaism first. You have the Magi, uh, the Roman centurions, uh, this woman, and, and several others um, from time to time that are mentioned. And, and these tell us that Gentiles also have that salvation. In fact, that salvation is for all people in all places and at all times. A Canaanite woman is about as Gentile as you can get. The Canaanites were on the list of the people that the Israelites had to drive out of Canaan, as the Lord said through his servant Moses, you shall devote them to complete destruction. The Hittites and the Amorites, the Canaanites and the Perizzites, the Hivites and Jebusites, as the Lord God commanded. If a Canaanite woman can have a faith that causes Jesus to say, O oh, woman, great is your faith, that faith is for you as well. Here we know, as the Holy Spirit works saving faith in anyone, that there is not Greek or Jew, circumcised or uncircumcised, barbarian, Scythian, slave, free, but all in Christ, and Christ in all, as St. Paul writes. The Holy Spirit inspired the Apostle Paul also to write, It is not the children of the flesh who are the children of God, but the children of the promise are counted as offspring. With these words, the Holy Spirit teaches us that the true Israel is not based on genetics but on faith in the promises of forgiveness, life, and salvation that we have in Jesus Christ. This woman had demonstrated that she had, that the Holy Spirit had given to her a great faith. Jesus acknowledged her faith and in so doing proclaimed that although she was a Gentile genetically, by grace she is a child of Abraham one of the lost sheep of Israel. Jesus loved this woman dearly. He loved her enough to suffer the offense of living with sinners as well as dealing with them and interacting with them even though he never sinned. He loved her enough to suffer an unjust and cruel physical torture for her. He loved her enough to lift up her sins and carry them to the cross. And with his holy and precious blood and his innocent suffering and death, he earned a place for her at the table with the rest of the children of God. She now waits with Jesus for the last day. And on that day, Jesus will raise her body from the grave just as he himself rose from the dead. And on that day she will join the true and eternal Israel at the wedding feast of the Lamb in his kingdom which has no end. She does not deserve this, but yet she has it because Christ earned it for her and Christ gave it to her. Like the Canaanite woman, we don't deserve a seat at the table either. Nevertheless, the Lamb offers his table to us, and he will do that again today. Not only did Jesus sacrifice himself to earn life for this woman, but he also did all of that
for you and for me. And when the Holy Spirit plants faith in you, He makes you part of the true eternal Israel, the Holy Christian Church. He cleanses you with the blood of Jesus and covers you with His righteousness. You don't deserve any of it, but it's all yours because the Holy Lord Jesus Christ earned it for you and because He freely gives it to you through word and sacrament. You also have a place at the table with the rest of God's children and you will have a foretaste of that place at the feast today as we receive the body and blood of Christ. It's all yours by the grace of God forgiveness of sins, salvation, and eternal life. They're all yours through faith in the crucified and risen Lord Jesus Christ, who gives it to you by His gracious love for you. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. May the peace of God which passes all understanding keep your hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus. Amen. At this time we would normally collect our offering, but again we are still uh, using our social distancing and all those kinds of things, and so offering plates are in the back. You either gave it as you came in or left, and for anyone who is not here today, remember that you can uh, also send it in, bring it in, or use the electronic means on the website to, to make your offerings. Please now let us rise for prayer. Let us pray to the Lord for all that we need and on behalf of all people that He may bestow upon us the riches of His grace and that we may receive the gifts with faith and thanksgiving in our hearts. For true unity in the faith, for the preservation of pure doctrine, for harmony in the lives of our congregation, district and synod, and for charitable hearts that put the best construction on what we see and hear, let us pray to the Lord, Lord have mercy. For those outside the kingdom, for missionaries near and far, especially for Jana Engelhart and Josh Lang and his family, for the ministries and agencies of our church whereby the gospel is spoken to those who have not heard, and for those who hear that they may be brought to faith, let us pray to the Lord, Lord have mercy. For all pastors and church workers, for those preparing for full-time church work, and for those considering church work vocations, let us pray to the Lord, Lord have mercy. For all families, for husbands and wives to live in faithfulness to each other, for all mothers with child, for all children, and for all those who bring them to baptism and nurture them in faith, let us pray to the Lord, Lord have mercy. For our president, the Congress, our governor, all elected and appointed leaders, all judges and magistrates, the members of the armed forces, and our police, firefighters, and emergency medical personnel, and all health care workers in their duties to protect and to serve us, let us pray to the Lord, Lord have mercy. For the healing of the sick, the relief of the suffering, the comfort of the grieving, and the peace of the dying, we ask you to for those who are men mentioned in our hearts, as well as for Nadine Petrosky, Elizabeth Tonjes, Kathy Schultz, Brody Bledsoe, Kristen, Pearl Abrahams, Cleo Tell, Gary Brunsbach, and also for the family of Bernice Miller, um, the sister of Orlean Kent. We ask that you bless them and keep them and for all those who care for those who are in, in affliction, let us pray to the Lord, Lord have mercy. For this holy assembly and for our communion upon the Lord's body and blood, and for us to hear in our lives the fruits of the Spirit 
and do the good works for which we were created, let us pray to the Lord, Lord have mercy. For our church and its mission, for our school and all that it does, and for the children and teachers and all who return to school this week, that you keep them safe, let us pray to the Lord, Lord have mercy. For all honest work and occupations, for our good use of the fruits of our labors, for generosity for those in need and for the tithes and offerings that accompany our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, let us pray to the Lord, Lord have mercy. For our remembrance of, sa of the saints and in thanksgiving for their faithful witness that at last we may join, be joined with them in their eternal presence, let us pray to the Lord, Lord have mercy. Lord God, giver of all that is good, Mercifully hear the prayers of your people and grant us your grace that we may endure the changes and chances of this mortal life and be found worthy when our Savior comes to bring to completion all things through Jesus Christ our Lord who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Blessed Lord of heaven and earth, you have had mercy on, on those whom you created and sent your only begotten Son into our flesh to bear our sin and be our Savior. With repentant joy, we receive the salvation accomplished for us by the all-availing sacrifice of his body and his blood on the cross. <clears throat> Gathered in the name and remembrance of Jesus, we beg you, O Lord, to forgive, renew, and strengthen us with your word and spirit. Grant us faithfully to eat his body and drink his blood as he bids us to do in his own testament for the forgiveness of our sins and everlasting life. We give thanks to you, almighty God, that you refresh us through this salutary gift, and we implore you that of your mercy you would strengthen us through the same in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever, Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, in the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take and eat. This is my body which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Receive now the benediction of the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. Amen. Receive now the body and blood of the Lord and may it strengthen you and preserve you unto life everlasting and that you may depart in peace. Please be seated and you will be ushered out.